What's up you guys, Century Productions here, and welcome to the Watchtower series. Uh, if you're new here, this is just basically a deep dive of my toy photography. I take you through my setups, how I pose my figures, how I light my setups, how I do my cutouts, all that good stuff. Uh, as you can see, we're doing a little cover recreation of Astonishing X-Men, a really cool run uh, from the early uh, 2000s, 2004, uh, one of the more modern X-Men books. And uh, this setup is completely thanks to these two figures right here. Uh, we got the new Astonishing X-Men version of Emma Frost, and of course the new Cyclops. These both come from the Marvel Legends Chod Build-A-Figure series, which I recently picked up. I haven't 100% completed it just yet. I'm missing the Monet uh, for <laughs> one of uh, Chod's uh, legs. So I'm, I'm looking for that in stores right now, toy hunting a little bit, but you know, when I picked up this Cyclops, I was like, oh man, I gotta do something for Astonishing X-Men. Uh, it's from Joss Whedon and John Cassidy. Excellent art, awesome story. Uh, and I think this is one of the more iconic covers uh, from those books. This is from number seven. Uh, I found this online, basically printed it out. It was really hard to size this cutout, um, to be honest with you, I kind of eyeballed it. And uh, basically, I just cut out the center. And if you guys are familiar with this image, you'll know it has them all standing in the center uh, right here after Cyclops just uses optic blast to blast through this wall right here. And uh, yeah, they're all kind of set up very similar to this. I'm moving around the setup a little bit. I do want to show you guys this, which is kind of funny because I do have the center that I cut out. And it's kind of funny because it was perfect when I was posing all these figures. I kind of just laid it right next to them. And um, let me see if I can give you guys the, the full effect right here. If I can get the light to show just right. But you can see for the most part, they're pretty much posed the, uh, the same way. Um, but as you can see, there are some characters, like I said, the Beast is more of a cat-like appearance in this version uh, of the X-Men. Uh, and they did release that figure a long time ago, right when Hasbro initially took over the Marvel Legends license. And uh, that figure is really, really old, dated, it's not that good. And I've actually never owned it, even though I have like most of the Toy Biz and early Hasbro figures. So I just kind of stuck in my Jim Lee Beast right here, just as a stand-in. Um, we are using the old Toy Biz Marvel Legends Wolverine though right here, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't think I've ever shot this figure. I've owned, I have two versions of this back in the day. Uh, you know, they didn't really give us many accessories for the Wolverine. So, uh, you know, we would want to, uh, you know, for instance, take a picture of Wolverine depowered where he doesn't have his claws out. So I bought an extra one of these. Uh, and cut off the claws, but of course I needed the claws for this shot, like they, you see in the reference of the uh, cover number seven. Uh, but it kind of worked out. It was kind of hard to, to, you know, replicate this cover. Uh, I'm gonna move this again, <laughs> uh, because the kitty in the back, she stands about the same height as the Emma. So in order to make her appear shorter, as you can see, she's right here. She's much shorter. Um, uh, I kind of had to level everything up and keep her at the lowest part of my base I have right here. So everyone's standing on some DVD cases. Colossus is standing on two DVD cases. Just because in this reference, you can see how much bigger Colossus is than the rest of the team. And of course, this Colossus figure that I have right here is not nearly as big as it's shown on this. Uh, reference right here so I kind of had to like manipulate the, the the levels of all the figures at which height they were standing just to kind of make it seem a little bit closer to the actual cover and even when I you know eyeballed this cutout to you know thinking to myself how, how do I size this exactly uh, right it's very hard to do so as you can tell I think I, I still made it a little bit too big there's you know good amount of distance from the top of Colossus's head to, to the uh, trade dress up there. Um, but you know, for what it is, I, I think it works pretty well. I've done these cover recreations before and you know, uh, I've done like 10 or 11 of them now at this point, so I'm fairly confident when I'm taking these shots. I know what kind of issues I'll run into and how to address those issues and how to fix them. Um, in which I ran into a couple. The main issue you run into when you're working with these um, cover recreation, you actually print out the cover, is the alignment. You know, th depending on the angle of your camera, you, you just, in my experience, I've just never seemed to get it just right to where it's looking directly on and all the sides are, um, 
straight up and down and just the angle is very tough to to figure out on these uh, types of shots so you just kind of gotta you know mess around with it a little bit take lots and lots of shots um, you know I'll throw the my uh, uh, my stick onto my computer and actually look at the shots and see if I can crop them within the span of like an actual comic book and uh, it ended up working out another issue with this kind of shot is you know you have this black cover and if you actually collect comics you know black covers are very prone to creases and and inconsistencies and they're very hard to grade and get good grades on uh, you know it's kind of applicable to this shot as well you know there's all kinds of inconsistencies that can show up on these black covers and um, more than anything the lighting is the hardest part you know I have to make sure that I put enough light on these figures so that uh, you can clearly see each of them but at the same time I can't point my light directly at this uh, this cutout right here because then it's gonna um, kind of wash out the black here so you have to work with a very high contrast you have to really boost your contrast all the way up boost your saturation a little bit make sure you have enough light hitting the figures but not too much light hitting this actual cutout and it's kind of just you know you like I said playing with the uh, lighting uh, throwing your stick on your computer looking at it uh, checking for any inconsistencies and I think I got it to a point where everything kind of looks just where it should be uh, you know to, to the best of my ability so it was kind of interesting um, uh, trying to recreate this cover in particular so here you can see more of the setup as you can tell I got some of the DVDs on here like uh, you know, like I was saying, basically, uh, pretty much all these guys are standing on DVDs except for Kitty just to make her appear in the frame that she is shorter. Even though I think she is actually a little bit taller than the Emma. Uh, Beast kind of had to be posed crouching down really low to kind of match that pose of Wolverine like we kind of see in this reference right here. Uh, you know, that was the cool thing about cutting this out of the center. I could just uh, plop it down right here and just really study it and look at it and really fine-tune all these poses to make them as accurate as I could to that image but you know no matter what you really do as accurate as you try to make it it'll just never 100% look exactly like that image obviously um, but you know it was still fun trying to you know recreate it the best I could and I have to say man I really like the Cyclops figure the Cyclops figure is really fun to play around with the Emma Frost is very accurate to her uh, comics version but she's not very poseable but you know I threw her in here and she gets the job done so um, you know Colossus is always fun to play around with it was cool whipping out this old uh, toy Biz Wolverine figure and of course the Beast is one of the greatest Marvel Legends figures if not the greatest um, so yeah overall really fun shot and I'm glad to add uh, a couple of these characters to the Astonishing X-Men team and hopefully they can round it out and give us a new cat beast in that costume that would be really cool and it'd be nice for them to re-release the Colossus I think a lot of people didn't get that Colossus from that two-pack with the juggernaut and uh, it'd be nice for them to re-release uh, that figure just so maybe I could pick up another one so yeah I, I just want them to re-release it just so I can pick up another one not anybody else uh, anyways let's check the shot out all right I am on the table uh, doing a little Wolverine shot uh, I shot this figure once before I think I did a Hulk cutout shot with it and, uh, you know, I've always really liked this figure. Uh, you know, it uses the base buck for uh, the more modern Wolverine figures that we've been getting from Hasbro. And uh, this one came shirtless and lots of detail with, you know, the hair on the arms, chest, the back. Came with a couple different heads, I believe. Uh, came from the five pack that came out like a year or two ago. Uh, it had like Omega Red in it and Mastermind. And, uh, it was a cool little five pack. And, uh, I don't know, I was just kind of messing around with this figure, you know, kind of, you know, just, you know, posing. That's how a lot of my ideas come to fruition. I just I'm sitting around basically playing with toys and I was looking through, you know, my extra hands, you know, because if you're a Marvel Legends collector or an action figure collector and collect a lot of figures, you know, you have like a bin just full of hands. And I came across these hands that I used for a century shot, maybe like seven eight months ago and it was just one of these hands I had painted a little bit of red on because he was holding a bloody skull 
and I was like, oh, this might work pretty cool for Wolverine. You know, when Wolverine murders a bunch of people, and he's completely bloody, and then he retracts his claws back into his hands, his hands are still going to be bloody, so it kind of got me thinking like that. So then I took this other hand, and just basically did the same process I did with the original hand, and bloodied it up a little bit. So now I've got like a... You know, what? what is that famous statue uh, over in Greece or wherever the hell it's from? Uh, the Thinker, you know, where he's sitting uh, and he's butt naked and he's just, he's got his hand on his chin and he's thinking. This is my, the Wolverine version of that, I guess. Uh, just unfortunately, he's not completely naked like that statue, but we don't need him completely naked for this uh, shot. We just, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of convey that, you know, he's like, God damn, what have I done? Or, you know, uh, this shit again, you know, just, you know, some, this is just a Wolverine shot, you know, kind of reminds me the, I think it was the first issue of the death of Wolverine where he's like sitting on the porch of the cabin after murdering a bunch of people and he's just sitting there and he's like, God damn, I just murdered all these people. So, uh, kind of, you know, it took inspiration from that and from the figure and then, uh, you know, I was looking around, uh, you know, my dios and I was like, which dio haven't I messed around with? Uh, recently and uh, this one kind of popped up this was a gem that I found on uh, eBay and uh, it's just this crazy diorama made out of foam and it's got like all this texturing and green moss added to it I've maybe shot it two three times uh, and it's got all this like fantastic rock work in the background and you know you know the figures are always art you know me taking my photos uh, is considered art or I'd consider it art but man this dial is this is art, man. This is a really beautiful piece. And I think I got it for like 70 bucks on eBay. It's maybe like 12 feet wide and uh, maybe another 11, 12, uh, not 12 feet, uh, 12 inches, 12 inches wide, 12 inches tall. And uh, man, this is just an awesome dio that I don't really use uh, that often. I have so many dios that it almost works perfectly for my shots because I can cycle through them. And then, you know, you won't see the same dial over and over and over again throughout my feed. Uh, but maybe that's just how I, I think. I look through my feed. I'm like, oh, I use that dial too many times. But So, yeah, kind of built that scene around. Um, if you watched my uh, previous episode of The Watchtower where I did took a look at the uh, rectangular custom Deep Sea Armor Iron Man, you'll know I took a shot with this, like, blue plastic... Saran wrap, whatever you want to call it, I found it on Amazon. Uh, it's just basically blue plastic, and it's see-through. And you know, you crumple it up, you stick it on top of a sheet of uh, blue construction paper, and you just got it, kind of got it writing right underneath this dial. It creates this really nice little waterline, you know. So now we got all the elements in place. We got Wolverine sitting pondering, thinking about what he's just done. We've got this dead guy situated over here, which is the G.I. Joe uh, spirit iron knife figure. Kind of just got his feet laying out. Uh, just, I just felt like adding that. And then we've got uh, my garage kit by Lonzi light over here uh, with a really warm setting. And then, um, yeah, so we've got basically a little sunset shot on the water. I think it's really nice. I, I really, really like this. I like how the lights mainly coming from here and it gets a little bit darker as you get further over here. And maybe there's like, uh, I don't know, a deeper meaning to that because the light's over here and as it gets darker over here, we got the dead body over there. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I did that on purpose. Maybe I just discovered that right now. I definitely just discovered that right now. But anyways, I think it's kind of cool. It's, it was just me basically messing around with the sunset kind of idea and uh, this dial is just so cool I mean you could I could definitely picture this happening in a comic book him sitting on a rock after just murdering a guy on the water with the sunset coming in I think this is a really cool shot I really like this uh, I'm not gonna show you guys another angle because there's not really too much more to the shot there is a light right here that's just giving him a little bit light so you can see his hands and you can see the the feet of uh, uh, the dead G.I. Joe guy over there. Very uh, subtle uh, with the G.I. Joe uh, posing. I just kind of wanted him in there. If you notice it, that's awesome. If you don't, no big deal. The main focal point, of course, is Wolverine. But, you know, if you look at the picture a little bit longer, you're like, oh, he just murdered that guy. Awesome. So, yeah, it's my little Wolverine shot. I really like this shot. Alright, so I'm at my desk, 
kind of just been playing around with this chod or chod. I guess the apostrophe in the middle of his name represents a pause between the syllables. Uh, but you know, everyone's gonna call him Chad anyways, but been playing around with this figure. I think it's an awesome figure. I love this character. It's got me reading a lot more about the Star Jammers. You know, we got the Corsair in this wave as well. And I love both of these figures. I think they're fantastic. Uh, you know, even though this uh, Chod uh, basically is just reusing the buck from the old Abomination Builder figure, I think it's still a really awesome figure. I always really like that figure. I like this figure a lot. Uh, and it got me reading a lot of Star Jammers books. You know, they had an X Men spotlight, a couple different X Men spotlights back in the day. And, you know, they pop in and out of the Chris Claremont X Men run. You know, Corsair is Cyclops' dad, and there's tons of stuff with them being in space. Uh, but anyways, I, I was looking at the, you know, this figure, and I was like, this figure is not very comic accurate to the counterpart in the actual comics. I just wanted to pop in here real quick and let you guys know that over the years, Chad has been drawn differently uh, by different artists. Uh, sometimes he has the yellow lips and the yellow ears, sometimes he doesn't, sometimes he has the yellow nails, the yellow fins. It all depends on the artist that's been drawing him. Uh, this repaint that I'm doing here is more based off of his first appearance, but the version Hasbro gave us is actually accurate to the comics as well. And since this is kind of based on his first appearance, or at least his appearance in the X-Men books, I was like, I think I can do something about this. Uh, basically, all these yellow parts that you see on this figure uh, were initially green. Uh, this is how he looks like in the books. Uh, I got this pulled up on my computer here. So here's like a little screenshot of what he looks like in the books. As you can see, his ears, his lips, his fins, his toes, his fingernails, they're all yellow with hints of orange. Uh, obviously I didn't put the orange in here. I was thinking about it. I even mixed up the paint, but you know, I'm not a customizer, man. It, doing something like this, just painting the nails and the fins and the lips and everything was a pretty big undertaking for me because I don't really have any experience painting anything. I knew it was gonna take like several coats to, for it to really come out correctly. And I'm actually pretty impressed with how I did. I think it came out uh, fairly good. Uh, and you know, I'm very happy that it's a lot more comic accurate because I wanna take a picture of these two guys. Um, you know, you can kind of assemble a ragtag version of this team, the Star Jammers. And then you can also, if you have a Silver Sable or a, a uh, Jocasta, you can pop her head off and use the uh, Lalandra head that we got a while back. I think it was with the Rogue, right? I'm not, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, you can kind of make a little Star Jammers team. We're still waiting on Hepzibah and Raza. I'm hoping that those come out uh, fairly soon so we can kind of complete the OG team. That would be really cool. But uh, yeah, I thought to myself, I was like, oh, I can just uh, paint his, uh, his little uh, forearm fins and his nails yellow, and that won't be too crazy. I did that to uh, Mr. Hyde back in the day, and uh, I didn't really think it was gonna be that big a deal. Well, it kinda took me the entire day to do that, uh, to just paint the nails and the lips, and I just had to be really careful. I didn't wanna mess anything up. Like I said, I made the orange, but I'm not even gonna attempt to throw any orange on this because this was definitely me stepping out of my comfort zone. Um, doing this but I am very happy with how this turned out so I did want to show you guys uh, kind of what went into me just repainting all of this and I haven't seen anyone do this just yet uh, then again I don't know if anyone really cares to have a like accurate first appearance of Chad um, on their shelf but you know when I take my pictures I just want them to be as accurate as I can so uh, painted all this stuff nails fingernails and just basically took me like three, four hours just to do all that, but I'm very happy with how this turned out. So um, I'm going to research or read some more Star Jammers comics or appearances of Chad and Corsair and Binary and all them and come up with an idea. And uh, we're gonna take a picture of the Star Jammers. Really cool team. I really like these figures, man. All right, I'm finally on the table with the Star Jammers team or half of the Star Jammers team, uh, you know, the ones we just got in the wave at least. And I love these figures, I think they're fantastic. I did have the binary figure out and I was gonna try to figure something out with her because I know she's part of the Star Jammers, but I knew I wouldn't be able to get her into a walking pose. So 
I kind of uh, put her back in the display and just stuck with these guys. This is definitely X-Men animated uh, inspired. I believe there was an episode back in the 90s uh, where the X-Men kind of clash with Star Jammers in space and then they band together against a common enemy. That's kind of why I got the Jim Lee Cyclops out right here. Uh, I know in the comics, I believe these guys debuted in uh, X-Men 104 as a cameo. And then I think their first full appearance was X-Men 105. I know he was kind of, uh, Cyclops was wearing his giant size X-Men era kind of outfit with the, the hood on. Uh, but, you know, I, I went with this version. You can't go wrong with uh, the Jim Lee Cyclops right here, which has been... Um, de uh, cell shaded. I used uh, uh, not rubbing alcohol nail polish remover and kind of got rid of all the uh, cell shading on that until they release an actual version of that without the cell shading. But uh, these two figures, man, uh, you, we saw I just repainted this uh, uh, Chad or Chad, whatever you want to call him. And uh, you know, he did take a dive when I was posing him, and he did kind of get like a little piece of his ear, his paint kind of rubbed off, and then. You know, I kind of took a moment to, you know, uh, try to collect myself because I literally just painted it and to see it fall and then lose some of the paint was a little um, disheartening, but I got over it. He still looks great. Uh, like I said, very comic accurate with the Chod. Uh, I love this Corsair figure. Obviously, it shares the same body with this Cyclops figure. Uh, this is probably the best Marvel Legends body that's ever come out next to the Renew Your Vow Spider-Man body. Uh, but these characters, man, you know, there's some characters that come out, you know, Captain America, Iron Man, you know, other popular characters, and I just have so many ideas for them, I, I, I wouldn't be able to shoot all the ideas I have, uh, just because it's, it's easy to come up with ideas. And then you get characters like this, the Star Jammers, which I think are awesome characters, awesome figures, but man, I literally cannot come up with a single idea to shoot them. Uh, around. I, I, I just, I really couldn't. I, I, you know, looked through basically every single appearance they had in a comic book, uh, you know, every appearance they had in the animated show, which I think was like one or two, and, you know, I just looked up team shots, and man, I just, I, I really couldn't come up with anything as far as an idea goes, so... Uh, my backup plan was to kind of go and grab all these blue pieces. This came with a very large Transformers dial uh, I bought years ago, and it had like, I don't know, probably like 50 or 60 pieces, and it created this really long, crazy um, alleyway Transformers, like, uh, it was almost like the USS Flag, but Transformers version with like this kind of color. And I've never taken a transformer shot with it, but I've taken a lot of space shots with this diorama because it just always kind of feels like a spacey kind of diorama. It's got this like purplish blue that kind of runs throughout. It's got these this line work, and uh, it's it's basically just a giant puzzle. And I, I sometimes will just grab pieces and just kind of play around with it and see if I can come up with a cool little. Um, you know scene here so that's what I got right here I got like this uh, walkway right here I got this piece in the back that has like this nice little curve we got the space background back there so maybe this is the bridge of the star jammer maybe this is uh, you know a part of a space station I don't really know um, I just thought it kind of worked and I kind of just set this up and then I based my idea around the actual scene or the diorama itself. Uh, so, and then, you know, as I was doing more of that, I realized that, oh, I can kind of pose these guys to maybe convey a different story. So, uh, as we all know, Corsair is Scott's dad, and uh, they eventually meet uh, in the X-Men books, and Corsair didn't know uh, Scott and Alex were still alive. Uh, so I guess the kind of idea I'm going with here is I have Corsair's head down, child looking up, Cyclops looking up, and I think the caption's gonna be something like, when you owe 28 years worth of child support back pay, or something like that. I thought it was funny. I thought it'd be a, a, a funny idea uh, for these characters that I literally just couldn't come up with <laughs> any any other ideas for them. Uh, but man, they're really cool figures, so what I'll have to do with them after I'm done with this setup is I'll put them back in my display and then kind of stew on them. Maybe we might get a couple other members uh, completed for this team and maybe by the time I get the whole team completed or some more of the team completed, maybe I'll have some better ideas. But for now, they're just going to stay in this little scene I have right here uh, and they're just going to stay as great figures. But let me uh, switch up the angle and let me show you guys a little bit more of this setup. 
So here's a different angle. You can see kind of what's going on uh, behind over here. Uh, and you know, I got that space background. I believe I actually ordered that online. Uh, I found a very high definition picture of space, or stars I guess rather, and uh, I just printed a gigantic piece and you know it came out a little bit more of a glossy kind of uh, uh, shine to the actual poster, but you know if you kind of move your lights around a little bit you can make it work and I think it worked pretty well for this shot. Uh, you can see these guys are pretty raised up right here, maybe probably like eight, nine inches. Um, like I said, I created this scene and then I took the figures and kind of placed them in there from there. And uh, yeah, created this little space walkway. Like I said, this diorama is just a gigantic puzzle, uh, which I think is kind of cool, you know. I can kind of just build and create different things uh, that definitely weren't the intended use for this diorama, but that's kind of, you know, my style a little bit, so I, I kind of like doing that. Uh, yeah, we could see how they're posed. Uh, they all took a dive a couple times when I was taking the shot. It was very hard to um, balance them and pose them. And, you know, doing the walking poses, and I, I still don't even think my walking poses are all that good. Sometimes I feel like you, the walk's too exaggerated. Sometimes I feel like the walk's not exaggerated enough. And then you have Chod back there, which is really hard to pose them in a walking position and get them balanced. Um, so yeah, you know, it's never like perfect, the, the walking poses, at least in my experience for my shots. Uh, but I did the best I could, you know. If someone asked me, I'd be like, I did the best I could. Uh, but yeah, so this is pretty much the scene. Lots of different lights, panel mini, panel mini, Elanzi garage kit, uh, LED desk lamp right here, a couple other lights that are shining t a little bit off of the space background, just to give it enough shine so that you can see uh, the stars popping off in the distance, but not enough to where you can see uh, the image getting washed out or anything like that. Uh, so yeah, that's my little Star Jammer scene. Hopefully it's either funny or you think the, the scene is kind of cool, something like that. Like I said, couldn't really come up with an idea. Uh, anyways, I'd like to thank you guys for watching the Watchtower series. Uh, make sure to check out my Instagram for more behind the scenes. Make sure to leave a comment below if you maybe got a, a Star Jammer suggestion for a shot for me. I think that'd be kind of cool. Or, you know, give me any feedback on, or on any of the shots you saw me take for this, uh, for this episode. And uh, I just really appreciate you guys uh, stopping by and checking this out. Uh, so, yeah, I will catch you guys next time. Let's take a look at this shot. Crispy.